Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Submarines have had a long-standing history in the U.S. Navy. These self-propelled warships can travel underwater at extremely high pressures and depths unreachable for humans. Submarines fill a variety of roles within the U.S. Navy. These include ballistic missile submarines, or boomers, fulfilling the primary mission of strategic nuclear deterrence. Able to defend themselves individually with torpedoes, their role for the defense of the country cannot be measured. Attack submarines are used for a variety of missions, including seek and destroy on enemy ships. Guided missile submarines are specifically oriented to complement the U.S. Navy platform of cruisers and destroyers. They are able to carry over 150 Tomahawk missiles, plus transport and support Navy Special Operations Forces. Crew members on these impressive machines must undergo intense training to ready themselves for any eventuality at sea. One situation submariners might find themselves in is rescue a person overboard. Regular man-overboard drills train sailors to be prepared for a successful rescue where time is critical and correct maneuvers require speed and precision. Another scenario sailors need to be prepared for is the possibility of fire. Any fire on board a vessel can be devastating but flames and the toxic smoke and gases unleashed within closed spaces of a submarine present a whole other level of danger. Specialist headgear is worn, providing protection from the heat, but also allowing a flow of oxygen to the user. Radio equipment is used to maintain contact while computer screens are observed to locate and cut off the fire. Rig for fire and general emergency. Teams with firefighting equipment neutralize fire and provide assistance to any affected crew. An essential feature of any submarine is the periscope. It is used to observe objects above the surface of the water in all directions, while leaving the crew in a protected position below. When under heavy observation, periscopes can only be used for a brief amount of time in order to avoid detection. Some radar systems can detect the slimmest of periscopes, which puts the vessel in immediate danger. For over a century, 
Periscope was the only way to look above the water, until the nuclear-powered submarines introduced underwater television. One noticeable thing about modern control rooms is the absence of a giant periscope in the middle with something to look through. Sailors use an Xbox controller to manipulate the digital photonics mast periscope. The optical device produces rotating outdoor images, which are displayed on nearby monitors. Digital Periscope not only enables multiple people to look outside, but also transmit images throughout the ship. Living underwater for long periods of time in an enclosed space is a unique environment in itself. With over 100 crew members on an average submarine working together in limited conditions, It is important that everyone cooperates in unity, fulfilling their specific roles. Life on board a submarine has often been described as living in a tube, with crew sleeping in bunk beds only a few feet away from torpedoes. Nevertheless, submariners still get to enjoy their life within the tight confines, and even get qualified medical support if needed. Undersea medical officers trained in the unique physiological stresses provide sailors with necessary medical and dental support while at sea. No submarine would be complete without a fully functional kitchen. A healthy and varied diet is essential for maintaining the physical and mental well-being of the crew. The kitchens are equipped with commercial cooking equipment, such as large fryers and ovens. The menu includes a variety of vegetables and meats, as well as a few home favorites, such as pizza and fried chicken. Five. Food is served buffet style from hot metal trays to keep it warm. The mess deck is relatively small compared to most conventional staff rooms, but does provide adequate space to seat the whole crew. A comfortable and social eating environment is crucial for maintaining morale amongst a crew working so closely together. After spending such a long time under the water, it is quite an occasion when a submarine fully resurfaces. Especially if it's in a location such as the Arctic Circle. When a submarine resurfaces, its ballast tanks are filled with air which brings the overall density of the submarine lower than the surrounding water. This brings them to the surface of the water. A relieved sailor uses a large rod to push aside large blocks of ice left on top of the submarine. 
Civilians and service members working the Arctic Submarine Lab spend several hours clearing ice from the hatches to gain access to the surface. A variety of tools are used, including a pickaxe and even a chainsaw to cut through the tougher parts of the ice. After successfully removing enough ice, crew members inside can finally open the hatch, allowing a safe route out. Awesome. Thank you guys. Thank you. Submarines do not always have to contend with such extreme weather conditions, however. When maintenance calls, a sub will dry dock at a naval base. It normally enters a narrow basin area, which is then flooded until it is raised into a dry area. Dry docking is important as it allows access to parts of the hull that are usually submerged in water. With the boat above land, the hull can be cleaned and checked over for any defects. This work is crucial as a preventative measure and is also a regulatory requirement to ensure safe operations. In the last couple of decades, U.S. Navy has conducted over 100 of submarine overhauls, with dry docking ranging from 20 to 50 million dollars each. Nevertheless, with submarines being vital to national defense, maintaining the fleet enables the country to stay combat ready for any emergency. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.